In this video, we're building a GPS tracker from scratch, and you don't need to be an expert to follow along. By the end, you'll have a file you can drop straight into Google Maps and watch your path appear in real time. Let's jump in. The recipe for this project requires an Arduino Uno. It's not the fastest or the smallest board out there, but it's a great starting point to get up and running. Next up is the NEO 6M GPS module, an affordable GPS unit that just works. We also need an SD card reader to store our tracking file. We'll talk more about this later. But for now, proceed with caution. Then we have a couple of helper modules. The KY016RGB LED will show us what's going on. And the KY004 push button will let us stop and start tracking. Finally, you'll need some hookup wires. You might be tempted to make your own cables, but honestly, your time is worth more than that. Let's start wiring. The first module to hook up is the GPS. It has four pins, ground, VCC, RX, and TX. The UNO has multiple 5 volt pins, and we'll connect VCC to one of them. The GPS can take either 3.3 volts or 5 volts, but I've had the best luck running it at 5 volts, so we'll stick with that. Ground marked as GND can go to any of the pins marked GND on the UNO. Next up are RX and TX. Don't worry too much about memorizing this. My Patreon page will have a full wiring diagram available for free. Now I found the best way to approach projects is to test each feature as you go along rather than building everything at once and then trying to figure out what's wrong. So with the GPS hooked up, let's test it. Here's a simple test sketch that forwards the GPS output straight to the Arduino serial monitor. All the sketches used in this video will be available for free on my Patreon. Upload the sketch to your Uno and check the console. You should see data streaming out. If you don't, double check your wiring, you may have RX and TX swapped. And just so you know, I'll blur out my own GPS data, I'm sure you can guess why. Once you've passed this crucial step, we can move on to the SD card reader. As with the GPS, we'll hook up power first, GND to GND, and VCC to 5 volts. Now in a short video I made before, I showed how to wire directly to an SD card without an adapter. Don't do that here. In that video, I was using an ESP board, which uses 3.3 volt logic. The UNO runs at 5 volts, so you'll need an adapter like this one, which has built-in level shifting. Also, don't use a memory card with important photos or files, just in case something goes wrong. Follow the wiring guide on my Patreon page to connect MOSI, MISO, clock and chip select. To test the SD card reader, our full sketch includes a check to see if the card is ready. To show us the result, we'll use the KY016 RGB LED. If it flashes red, that means there's something wrong with the card reader. Let's test it by removing the card and powering up. Here we can see the LED flashing red quickly, letting us know the reader isn't working. The console will also print an error message. With the SD card inserted and the wiring correct, our LED now has a steady flash. This matches the flash rate of the GPS module when it has a satellite lock. The console also confirms the SD card is initialized and shows the file name. When we explore the files on the SD card, you'll notice they are auto-incremented, so each new log gets its own file. Open one up and you'll see a header and footer. This is what makes it compatible with Google Maps. Both must be in place, and here's the catch. If you suddenly pull the power, the last line might not save, leaving the file unusable. That's where our button comes in. When you press it, the LED turns green to tell you it's safe to remove the card. From there, head over to Google My Maps, click Create a New Map, and import your file. Once it's loaded, you can customize the line color and width to make it easier to see. And there you go, your very own GPS tracker, ready for Google Maps. If you've made it this far, you should totally subscribe. Thanks for watching.